lots of good stuff to occur again. So the knowledge is, is this. We have hypnosis. Philosophy says know yourself. Christianity says know God through Jesus the Messiah. And that's why in church I've made a series of messages concerning the doctrine of man to understand what we are. So we have diminished quite a bit and we have basically uh, raised Christ. Uh, treated Christ as a higher level as we studied humanity, total depravity, total inability, and uh, what we are and the need to be the remedy for all these things and so on. So we, we are on the good track here. Verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Circle the whole sentence. Let's discuss the eyes of your heart. Brother Lee, that's spiritual insight here, okay? The eyes of your heart. You don't have eyes on your heart, but that's spiritual insight. Simply because the heart is the seat of all emotions. The heart is the seat of the emotion. But it is something else also. It is the center of one's personality. It is the center of one's personality to which God speaks to us. When he speaks to us, he speaks to our heart. Where are you, Francois? Come, I'll talk to you. It is the center of one's personality. And God speak to our person. Put another sentence. Take your time. The will of God is for us to discover the deep things of God. We cannot wait. Babyhood in, in Christ should be very short. The will of God, that's why Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That has been our journey so far in Ephesians. His will, it's not tomorrow I need to work. Right now, his will at this very moment we know what the will of God is right now. Discover me, get to know me more, and give thanks to me for what I've done for you. That's the will of God right now. He wants us to discover the deep. Come to me and study me. That's why he gave us that book. Now the word enlighten, circle the word enlighten. The word enlighten is close, closely related to the work of illumination. That's how we write it, illumination. What's the work? This is a specific job. This is a specific work of the Holy Spirit. What's, how, what's the definition of it? It's right there. How we do we define illumination? It is the work of the Holy Spirit by which he enlightens man's mind to enable him, man, to understand what, God has, re what has been revealed by God. That's what we do now. So that's why any light bulbs that goes in in your heart and in your soul, when you hear a phrase of truth and you say, oh, I, like, I like it, I like it. Uh, it has nothing to do with me. You know when you receive a nugget of truth and nobody sees you, you receive a piece of information that you chew on it spiritually it's a pearl for you it goes out goes down and that's what happened to you now maybe francois has nothing to do with this this is it illumination and everybody's capable why because all of us without exception have the abiding of the holy spirit within you 
It's not an IQ thing. Don't need a diploma. No. So that I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. So that you will know what is the hope of this calling. That's what we've been discuss discussing and so on. And keep in mind, make a phrase that is not there. It does not involve new revelation at all. It involves what has already been revealed. Understand here what has been revealed by God. Where do you find it? Genesis to Revelation. Your Bible. Sixty-six books. Is this? There is greater library than that. Study law at Harvard, and uh, they have more than 66 books. But I'm very thankful to God for having given only from Genesis to Revelation. That's what he wants us to know. Get this. Do I need more? No. Do I need less? No. But when I look of what we have done with it, twisting it all kinds of way around, allegorizing and so on, I am very, very thankful that we have only 66 books. I keep having this question come into my mind. Where does progressive revelation come in? You know, you yeah. say... If right now, we, we, progressive revelation comes in uh, because the, the Bible was not written in one shot. Right now, as we speak, progressive revelation is over with this because we have the full canon. The canon is slow. That's the canon. But throughout, you, when Job was given, when Job was in the planet, the canon was not closed. When talk in 1 Corinthians talks about lady prophesying and so on, the canon was not closed. Yes. Revelation was not written. But when John was, uh, what's the word? Exile to the island of Patmos here, he received a revelation, and when he wrote revelation, the clan and became closed. So there is no such a thing as progressive revelation anymore. So what's happening now is the enlightenment, because the information is there, we just didn't see it. So as, as we read or study... That's it. More, um, Absolutely. Pa Paul is given... When Paul wrote this, we were in AD 60... What is the year that the book of Revelation was given? Between 85 and 90. Not 1985. A.D. 85 and 90. And he... That's it. That's the Cain A.D. Hahel. The complete revelation of Christ. And now all of us here in this classroom can understand this. Why? Because you're smart new. Because of this. The work of the Holy Spirit, the of the Holy Spirit through Bible expositor, pastors, Sunday school teacher, because of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But this is not what I'm talking about. I'm only a vessel here. Write papers, prepare this, deliver that to you. I cannot pretend to be the Holy Spirit. That's why I, I, I love to diminish in a sense. You, you are a great teacher. I hear that often. I accept it. It's flattering. I like it. It's, it's a word of encouragement. What's the gift of teaching? Is the ability to organize the truth, put the truth together, and communicate it, to, communicate it to the masses. Does it involve any kind of new revelation to me? Not at all. I need to work with the text. I prepare faithfully, you sustain me financially to be able to prepare on a full-time basis. I deliver it to you. But the one that makes it understandable and palatable and reveals truth to you is him, not me. That's why I like that ding, 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 ding. I use that expression because there it's happening very often in my office when I cross-reference and use all the tools that I have and go back to binders sometimes that I haven't looked for about 15 years. And I think this word is working. And God is talking to me and it works out. And I get up and turn the coffee in, get a slice of pizza there. And I need to go. I cannot stand too excited. 
get in the car pretending to, I need to go to Walmart, buy screws, and I don't even go, walk on the parking lot. And my heart is, who's this? Yes, telling me, put it together, that's beautiful. Is it in context, Father? Yes, it is. I'm not violating anything here. And I get excited. Same for you when you receive a nugget. I call it the mech nugget. Chicken that you... Honey mustard. And you take the bite and it... Honey mustard was good and you return. Oh, it's better off as Messiah nugget. That's it. So it's given to you by him. It's... It's him talking to you. But now, no, there is a but now. What do we do with it? Do we resist it? Or we bow the knee to it? This is, this is you, it's not me. I know lots of people that have stiff knees. Do you know who's the first one that I know? I'm on the camera. Do I look good? In some aspects of my life, my knees are very stiff. And so in your life, your knees can be very stiff in some aspect. But it's not the issue. It's, it's, we, 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 will, we will all sit at the judgment seat of Christ and he will tell us what to do with this. But enlightening of things already revealed. Now you were back, okay? Not new in revelation, but things already revealed. By, beloved, answer my question. Don't answer it at the same time. Why would we need a new revelation when we... There is this pact of stuff that we're receiving that we who have heard, but you didn't know that in depth. So let's just be happy with this. Why new things? Such as understanding his ways and his purpose. is dealing with people. Nuggets here. It's not on the, uh, on the hope into which we were called. You see what he says here, I'm in a guy, I'll come in a guy because I close my Bible. Where he says in verse, uh, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the same? It doesn't include his dealing with the people. The conflict Russia and Ukraine. You're not scared. It's not the end of the world yet. It's not a worldwide conflict yet. And it's not Gog and Magog. Ukraine is on the, uh, is on the, is on the, is on the east, uh, west of Russia. It's not the invasion of the north. You're anchored. Pandemic. The hope into which we were called. So the more we study this, the more the world behind us is vanishing. Yeah, okay. There is a conflict here. The rich inheritance which she... Uh, possess, which, we, which, he, uh, which he possess in us. To Christ has been given everything, and to you also. Understanding his power available to us to serve. That's what it refers back to what I said. What do you do with this? Making no eye contact right now. When you think about the power that I'm going to be talking about in a moment here, you have been given the power available to serve. It's an name. Any enabling, enabling power given to you, it's already there. Don't pray to be strong. Be strong. You have all the tools already. I will allude to wait again, wait again. He's a mechanic, the guy. And he has probably snap-on tools into a red case. I don't know if he has, is it red? Because it's all, it's red, now it's black. And all the... the, the the wrenches and the screwdrivers and the pliers are there. I'm not going to find Wade bring. I need that screwdriver. Wade, open the door. It's on the third one. Bottom left. Open it. Paul prays here for appreciation. Put that, this in your note. Of the values placed upon us. Appreciation of his plans within his eternal purposes. Would you repeat that, please? Really? 
Good. Yes, yeah, I'm just pulling your leg, really. He prays here, Paul, I pray that your eyes may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of it, the glory and inheritance in the saints. He prays for appreciation. Embrace it. Appreciate it. The values placed upon us. In accordance to his plans within the eternal purpose. What he prays for is that we may accept it in grateful humility. In grateful humility. The grace bestowed upon you. You know what's the word grace, brother uh, Micaiah? Unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. What can you say? What can a person say to this? Unmerited favor. What can you reply? Thank you. Yeah, but free will. No. Thank you. Yeah, but... Debating carelessly with him is showing a lack of appreciation. Why are you trying to pay back, Francois? Stop it. Be good, but don't be good. Don't do good in order to be blessed. Verse 3. Verse three. Yes. Um, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual Stop. blessing. Who has blessed us. It's a past tense construction. Yeah, but I want to be good because I would like to be blessed, Father. Yes. We've already been blessed. Correct. It's a complete different attitude for serving. Who has to learn this? Me? Oh, if I'm sick with fever and COVID or whatnot, I cannot come to school. A God is stuck without me. Who will teach them? I'm the fourth person of the triune God. <laughs> Don't you wish. <laughs> God says to you, have COVID, stomach flu, relax. Take a few days off. But I do it, Father, because I want to be blessed. It's not my attitude, but I pretend now. Ah, if I don't come to the TSMASG tomorrow, uh, I'm going to lose my blessings. Verse 3, don't do it. There'll be verse 3. Don't do it. No. Verse 3, Francois, what's the point here? We're already blessed. And when we want to do something to serve, it's because we want to do it. It's not because the, the willingness is beautiful there. You, you want to do it because he's a, he has already blessed you. Yes. The surpassing greatness of his power, verse 19. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is the surpassing greatness of his power I have towards us? There be probably as, I, I'm assuming, to us word. Do you have a to us word in verse 19? Yeah. Toward us, I have the towards us. But if you have to us word, I like it better. It's stronger in that case. And what is the surpassing greatness of his power to us where to believe? I need to talk about this here. This is what we call divine enablement. And I pray with my eyes open right now that it will help us in regards to your gifts in the Spirit and your service to God. Get engaged. Let's serve one another. Make your faith going to the gym. Why? Because of what is the surpassing greatness of His power towards you. No, but I cannot do it. There is no such a thing as disabilities in Christ. Non-existent. Now that we have been chosen, verse 4, 
now that we have been predestined, adopted in verse 5. And that includes being part of God's purpose in this world and the age to come, the world to come also, the messianic age. Need to be a beacon in the valley. We are in this world, God knows, but we're not of it. We are in it, but we are not of it. We're not of the world's nature. But we love it so much. And His power, you will exercise that powerful in the messianic age where you will have a glorified body, be able to make decision, and you will never make the wrong decision. You will be in charge of nation. A guy like me, charge of... I don't know where I will be appointed on the planet, but together we will rule this planet with Him. Amen. Because it's given to man to do so. It was given to Adam and Eve. Verse 19, His power towards us is ours. We cannot, we cannot not serve. I have three things to close my meeting with today. Concerning the verse 19, what is the surpassing greatness of His power towards us who believe? I'll do 19, be probably next week. Maybe not, we'll see. Number one. That power was seen towards the dispensation, in the dispensation of promise to the patriarch. That power was seen before the law. It was seen towards Israel. Hey, opening the Red Sea to make them pass requires quite a bit of power. So past tense, before the establishment of the law. The law came at Sinai. When, he, when they were in, in Egypt, the, 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 they were not under the law. They were under the dispensation of promise made to the patriarch, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He delivered them with what kind of power? The power that resides in you today. We have example of it in Israel. They came out of Egypt. It's past here on my board. Yeah, it's number one. I'm still on number one. Number two now. We go to the other side of the board in the future. That power will reflect in the thousand year reign with the regathering of Israel and the salvation of Israel. Too fast. That power will be seen in the thousand year reign with the regathering of Israel from the four corners of the earth. It takes quite a bit of power to do so. And the salvation of Israel. Listen to Jeremiah 28, 23, 7 and 8. Listen to Jeremiah chapter 23, 7 and 8. Listen to this. 7 and 8. Chapter 23 of Jeremiah, verses 7 and 8. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares Jehovah, when they will no longer say, no longer say, as the Lord lives who brought up the sons of Israel from Egypt. Because if you go to the synagogue, that's all they talk about. The past deliverance of the people of Israel. But as the Lord lives here, therefore, behold, the days are coming. They have not arrived yet, declares Jehovah. When the Jews will no longer say, as the Lord lives who brought, us this, who brought up the sons of Israel from the land of Egypt. But... As the Lord lives, who brought up and led back the descendants of the household of Israel from the north land and from all the countries where I have driven them, then they will live on their own soil. There will come a time for Israel that the highlight will no longer be the Passover with the deliverance from Egypt, but God who brought us back into our land. That's the mighty power. That's the mighty power towards them in the future, towards them in the past. And now we take number three, in the dispensation of grace. Now, right now, in the dispensation of grace, church. The resurrection of Christ is the supreme. The resurrection of the Messiah is the supreme demonstration of power. It's supreme. It's past tense. 
This is the supreme demonstration of power. Finish your sentence in your notes. You know how sometimes I can look complicated. Because no Old Testament saints upon physical death were expecting to go up to heaven. They were going down to Sheol in Abraham's bosom or in hell. Because the blood of bulls and goats is not powerful enough to bring one to heaven. But upon death for us here is the supreme demonstration of his, of, of his power in the fact that upon death we go straight to heaven. That's the power towards us. It's greater than any Old Testament position. The very power, you want to make a note if you want, the very power is at work in us, the people of Christ. To energize, energizing the new life within the mortal bodies. Energizing the new life within our mortal bodies. This morning you came here, not by your own. You looked at the time, you said it's time to go to the study. It's a divine calling of the Spirit. It's being led by the Spirit. So this is a power that is already existent in you, even in a mortal body. Even in a mortal body. So it's not a past tense or future. It's right now. This power is available to us now. Where do you think I draw the strength to do what I do? Believe you and me, beloved, not every day, but often I, I suffer discouragement. But I suffer discouragement, why? Because I rely too much on my flesh. My power has to be drawn from above. And from above, with all the hope that there is, where's the discouragement? But I still have my sinful nature. I still lose sight of proper things. But if I hold on to the power given to me according to that the eyes so, so that you what is the surpassing greatness of this power to, to us were to believe, I am a believer. You know that you will never take that away from me. So this power is available to me. Therefore, making the hope of resurrection real for us. Beloved, it is what it is. Your resurrected body once you will leave that mortal body, is a reality. It is a reality. You are immortal. As far as the immaterial part of you is concerned, you are immortal. There is no such a thing as soul sleeping. This power is in us even in our bodies, so that we may be able to exercise our gifts for the lifting up of the body. But your future redemption is there. I'm sorry. It's a reality. I am not drunk. I didn't smoke anything. This is it. This is it. Otherwise, I'm greatly deceived. The one that has chosen me has deceived me. And there is only one God. This is it. It's unquestionable. He is risen from the dead. Questions and comments? Absolutely. And with having just lost a spouse, it gives me a lot of comfort. Amen. You, you, you nailed it. You nailed it. My peace I give unto you. 
You just, you just paraphrase that. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give. And that's the peace and hope and comfort that you're seeking. The paracletes, the, the one that comes alongside to comfort you. Karen, you have loss, but it's only gain. Walk the walk, and it, the Holy Spirit in you is a pledge. It's a down payment of more to come. The more to come is the fact that you will never be seeking comfort anymore. Father of grace, thank you for what you have done unto us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.